Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Thursday afternoon webinar. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, the future of our research and why it's so important to contribute our validated data to research. Um, so I just want to let you know we're going to hear from several people today and throughout the um, course of the webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box or in the chat box and we will get to them um, as soon as possible or definitely before the webinar ends. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Stacy Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. We're really happy to be here with you today. Uh, we're excited to uh, be doing this webinar today. Uh, everybody's going to be introducing themselves as they speak, but I wanted to share with you just a couple of important things um, that we want you to know about our relationship with Citizen. Um, we, in, uh, we started a, a trusted partners program this last year at the end of the year. We have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interest in cholangiocarcinoma patients right now and in cholangiocarcinoma research. We have a lot of companies approaching the foundation about wanting to work with us, about wanting to uh, get access to patients. And we're, we are extremely careful about that. So we decided as the board decided and as staff, we uh, talked a lot about what a, a trusted partner would mean for us. And so you can look on the website under This Is Us and you can look at our trusted partner website. We have four trusted partners and Citizen is one of our trusted partners. And I wanted to just tell you there are just there are a few important things that um, that that helps us do. It's so that we can do due diligence on our part to make sure that any company that we are interacting with that we are introducing you to um, that their core values are aligned with our core values, and that we have a relationship of trust with them. That we've worked with them over time. That we know that they do quality work. That they are a multiplier for our organization, you know, that they're, they're complementary or, or it, it helps us do more together and that we have a shared passion for this work. So we're, we're really thrilled to have uh, Citizen be one of our trusted partners and we're excited to, to talk with you about this study today and, um, and the process that Citizen is, uh, has put in place to help us do this. So I'm gonna introduce Dr. Shishir Mathel who's uh, from Emory, he and his um, research fellow, jo Dr. Jessica, K It's Kil is it Kilson? Is that right, Kilson. Dr. Mathel? Kilson, yes. yes. He's on. Too. Hi, <laughs> um, are here and they're gonna talk with you a little bit about this study. And, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about how important this kind of patient focused, patient driven research is. And, um, and I'm gonna turn the time over to them. Awesome. Thank you, Stacy, And thank you, Melinda and everyone. And welcome uh, to a Thursday afternoon webinar. I'm going to first start off by letting Jessica Kielsen, uh, Dr. Kielsen, say a few words, introduce herself, tell a little bit about her, and, and then I will, um, I'll say my thing in a bit. So Dr. Kielsen, all yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica Kielsen, and I am a current uh, general surgery resident and clinical research fellow working with Dr. Mythel over at Emory. We have some exciting projects uh, going on, and we're really excited to be um, working very closely with the Clangy Carcinoma Foundation and, and Citizen to um, hopefully come up with some, some exciting um, findings in the future. Excellent. So um, I'm sure sure myself, maybe some of my patients are on this webinar, I'm not sure, but I'm a surgical oncologist at Emory University. Um, I came here in 2009 and very, um, been very, very indebted to Stacy and Melinda and the Kalenji Carcinoma Foundation for just the incredible partnership uh, in terms of even just my academic career from a cholangiocarcinoma standpoint and my interests in biliary tract malignancies. And um, I'll, you know, I'll speak kind of from the heart as I usually do as Stacey and Melinda know. Um, you know, as a, as a researcher in academics, we often do a lot of disease research, just looking at cancer response. What's the tumor doing? Is the cancer shrinking on scans? What does it look like under the microscope? You know, what is the patient's survival? And we use all these objective metrics to kind of define success and define our research and really define how we move things forward. And I think too often, you know, we forget and I you know, try not to forget, but I think too often we forget that there's a patient behind all of this. We're not treating a cancer, we're treating a patient with cancer. And it's very, very important to keep the patient at the forefront. The patient is the single most important part of the relationship and 
you know, I always tell my patients to this. I just had a discussion with one of my patients today. I said, you're the captain. We're just kind of help coaching you. You're the captain of the ship. We're just kind of help guiding you, but ultimately the decisions are yours. So that's where really patient reported outcomes research, I think really has a play. It really comes into uh, really at the forefront of as we progress in, in terms of disease management. As a lot of you know, if you've been keeping up with the cholangiocarcinoma, you know, the, all the, um, the emails that go out and, and the newsletters, there's a lot of exciting things that are happening in terms of the treatment for this disease, in terms of, uh, you know, molecular testing and targeted therapy. And, you know, our surgeries are pretty good and we're getting, you know, good at the uh, chemotherapy and managing it. And we're really trying to personalize the cancer therapy. And I think the key word there is personalized. But as we, you know, start offering all these new treatments and new tests and really trying to get into the nitty gritty of the disease, we have to keep at the forefront how these treatments affect the patient. Uh, how do they tolerate it? Uh, what does it make them feel like? What is their quality of life? How does it affect them financially? All of these things are extremely important um, for the patient. Um, and, you know, as a physician, sometimes we overlook some of those things and we just look at the scans and say, well, great, the, the tumor is uh, shrinking. Uh, but we don't really ask the question, well, how are you feeling with this treatment and what is life like for you? So in that uh, vein, uh, Dr. Kielsen and I were talking and, you know, talking with Stacy and Melinda and the citizen group, trying to figure out the best way to understand how these treatments affect patients. And uh, we, in this uh, kind of uh, trifecta of combination between Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation, Citizen and Emory, I think we found a very novel and very effective way to reach out to patients, i.e. you all who are watching and really kind of figure out how these treatments are affecting you. And so as a lot of you have probably received, we have put together a, a, a survey using very validated surveys that have been used for uh, many diseases and, and many studies uh, over, over time. And we've applied them uh, specifically to the cholangiocarcinoma uh, situation. And I think we, I will be uh, very, very happy to tell you that 2,500 of you have already responded and filled out the survey. And I uh, really appreciate you doing that. And as we continue to reach out to you, I know another email went out to a lot of you uh, for just a little bit of extra information. Um, it's very, very important that we understand uh, how you, you know, you're feeling and we get your actual, not just the objective response to cancer treatment, but the subjective response to cancer treatment, meaning how are the patients feeling? And so this patient reported outcome study is extremely important in really understanding that. Now, really in order to take it to the next level, is we have to understand kind of what the patient's uh, feelings are and how it's affecting patients based on the kind of treatment they are receiving. And that is where the third part of our collaboration with Citizen comes in. Now, Citizen is a, it's an amazing, I was actually last year, I heard about them first time in January this year at San Francisco at the ASCO GI meeting. And I, I raised my hand and I said, hold on, I have to recap this. Are you telling me this is actually true that you can do this, 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 and this? And, and Sophia, who's on the call, actually was sitting next, she came and sat next to me after and she said, yep, we can do that. I was like, oh my goodness, like, that's amazing. I gotta get all my patients to do this. So, um, you know, they'll, I, will, I will not steal the other thing. They'll go into more details about Citizen, but in, in general, Citizen has the unique ability to basically, um, and annotate your entire medical history in a very single kind of document that really makes it easy for you to follow, but, but also makes it easy for the physicians to follow. So as you move your care or your physicians are following your care, it's very easy to understand what's been happening, what's been done, what treatments have you received, what have scans showed, what chemotherapy did you receive, what radiation did you receive, all of that. And, and uh, it makes it very, very easy. It actually makes your care better such that we don't get different information then. And by centralizing the care, I think it would help actually facilitate and uh, make your care a lot more streamlined. So by getting the data from Citizen and allowing us to use that in our research, this is just one example, but other research that there's a lot of research endeavors going on that Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation is spearheading as well as Citizen, but just in particular to the patient reported outcomes, knowing your uh, medical record data, the nitty gritty of all those things I just mentioned, and then being able to couple that with the patient reported outcomes that you are giving us in terms of how that treatment is affecting you would be extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, because, and what's the effect of that? The effect is that we learn how patients tolerate this, what, what kind of factors are leading to financial distress, what kind of factors are we leading to just depression or anything, or even success. 
uh, and that will help us kind of guide our treatment. So as we get better at the science, we also get better at applying that science to the right patients and understanding how we, when we apply it, how it affects patients. So together, I think with this project, filling out the survey and also enrolling in Citizen, allowing them to get your data and also allowing them to use the data for research, I think is really, really, it's a forward thinking project. Uh, this, this mechanism has never really been done before. Uh, I think we're kind of setting the tone for how to do uh, patient reported outcomes uh, research really. And hopefully this will be emulated uh, kind of across the country in different disease types using different advocacy groups for whatever disease people are interested in studying. Um, but really, it really comes down to all of you, the patients who are watching right now. So thank you to the 2,500 or so who've already filled out this survey. And I'll thank you in advance to those same 2,500 who are going to answer about six or seven more questions uh, that we needed to get in order to really hone in on the types of treatments you've had and really understand the answers you give us so we can get better at treating you in the future. So I'll uh, hopefully that summarizes it. I'll be happy to take questions when we open it up, but uh, I'll stop there. Unless Dr. Kielsen, if you want to add anything that I missed. No, I think you put it great. I, th I think that um, what's really important about the work that we're doing is that your cancer care does not kind of occur in a vacuum. You know, we as physicians kind of look at metrics to see how you're responding to your care in terms of, you know, surgery and adjunct and uh, adjunct therapies. But really, what's kind of behind all of that is how you know patients are experiencing their care and how they're experiencing their disease. And I think that that's something that is often overlooked and it's not something that we really take into account um, when, we're, when we're taking care of patients. And I think it's a big part of you know, the, the cancer experience overall. So um, we're very excited about this work and um, this partnership that we have with the Kalanji Carcinoma Foundation and Citizen. And I think that it's, um, like Dr. Mithel said, it's something that we're hoping that um, will be emulated across the country in, in all different kinds of disease states so that we can you know, better treat our patients in the future. Just wanted to add one thing. This is uh, Stacy again. Um, is that uh, this is a, these the these PROs, these quality of life are also impact are impacted. The FDA is looking at these, so this impacts. They're they're looking at these for drug approvals. They're looking at these for all kinds of things. And you may think, well, I'm I'm going to fill out this survey and it's just going to be looked at by Emory. No, the the whole point is that this is a very collaborative community and all of the researchers across the world are gonna have access to this information. And then they, you know, they can come up with better ideas. Can we do something different to avoid this? How, you know, this will impact your patient care directly, is them understanding how what they're doing currently is affecting your life. So just wanted to add that. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree 100%. And um, our patients never disappoint us. They always jump in and wanna participate and we appreciate that. And and ask you to keep it up. Um, speaking of patients, um, I'd like to now introduce you to Fred Neubauer, who is a patient of carcinoma, and he'd like to talk a little bit about his experience uh, with using Citizen. All yours, Fred. Thank you, Belinda. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Fred Neubauer. I reside in Mobile, Alabama. Brief history, October, late October 2019, I was uh, uh, diagnosed with stage four cholangio, and uh, we had a God wake moment when we met with the oncologist. My wife was reading a magazine, Conquer Magazine, which is a cancer magazine, and it just so happened, Calangio Carcinoma Foundation article was in there, and I immediately contacted Stacy, Melinda, joined uh, CCF, which is just a valuable tool not only for patient care but technology, everything. And Melinda told, told me, uh, I think early 2020 to join uh, Citizen Group, which it's a beautiful marriage as far as I'm concerned for the patient, uh, CCF and Citizen. Uh, I got in touch with Mikkel uh, Bunch who is here and Mikkel onboarded me smoothly. And uh, since we got started up, Citizen handles all the uh, documentation for uh, record keeping they contact the physicians, the hospitals, data accumulate everything, and it's a one-stop shop, which is uh, really great. Uh, how I've used it already, um, it is a one-stop shop. I, I was initially treated at the uh, University of South Alabama Mitchell Cancer Center. I was on a, a gem cyst chemo for 
a year, which is extremely long time. I uh, got wore down with platelets. And in the meantime, I knew that I was limited for my care here in Mobile. And uh, I, I now am under the care of Dr. Javley and his team at MD Anderson. I just completed three weeks of radiation treatment for, for my particular case uh, over Christmas holiday, and I'm waiting for results there. So uh, how is it used? Uh, uh, Mikkel puts in the data and her team. Uh, my oncologist, Dr. Cushman here at University of South Alabama and Dr. Javle talk based on ca uh, CAT scan uh, reviews, which they're all on file. And they came up with the plan for uh, in a, both an agreement on radiation treatment. So I've already got USA Medical Center and uh, MD Anderson talking with each other. In addition, I got a second opinion through the Cleveland Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic utilized Citizen to review my CAT scan to come up with an alternate therapy, which I chose not to do. I'm happy with my team. And then in addition, uh, Citizen uh, contacted, I think most of the CCF folks that are uh, members, uh, about Morehouse University, and I also have uh, access for them now to look at my records as well, along with my cardiologist to have high blood pressure. And he likes to look at the scans in my upper chest just to look at my thickening of my aorta. So there's a lot of benefits that, in addition to just cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, the, for you that aren't familiar with Citizen as a patient, they, they do accumulate and uh, data collect and store all the information. So it's a one-stop shop. You as the patient have the right to disseminate the information as detailed as you want. Me, I happen to be a person that believes that knowledge is a power, particularly for a cure for this cancer. And as a result, anybody that wants to look at my data, I don't, I don't hold anything back. They can look at everything. Uh, uh, in addition, I think Mikkel got me in touch with, uh, as I said, Morehouse School of Medicine, which is uh, in Atlanta, and they're starting to do some of their own uh, cancer research, particularly studying gene mutations, and I've gotten a uh, free genetic analysis uh, in addition to the two I've already had. So knowledge is power, and the more, uh, the more testing you can get done to identify potential uh, mutations is great. Uh, then also uh, uh, Citizen provides, based on the mutation testing in my data bank, uh, uh, match up the uh, uh, clinical trials that are available for me specifically, which I can talk to my oncologist about their input and whether they think it's uh, valuable or not. And then uh, lastly, uh, I'm just excited about the future because, I mean, I've just listed off a few and I know things are going to change and uh, more and more is going to be available. And I, I just can't thank Citizen and CCF enough for, you know, just the invaluable uh, information, uh, everything they do. It allows me the opportunity to worry about my care and not worry about the details. So that's about it. Um, I just want to Thank you for participating. Awesome. Thank you, Fred. We appreciate it. And I'm the same as you. I'm an open book. And however I can contribute to move the science forward and make it better for other patients, I'm happy to do so, um, as I know you are as well. Um, Sophia and Mikhail, I think I will turn it over to you. I know we have one question, but I think I'm going to save on to that, save it for, for after your presentation. Perfect there. I'll, I'll take myself off mute and take a few seconds to get my screens in order. Um, Fred, thank you for sharing your experience. And you forgot to mention in that long laundry list of things that you were one of the very first CCF patients to fill out the survey and participate in the Emory study. Uh, and so, you know, I think really highlighting the fact that now that you're armed with all your data in one place, contributing to research is a matter of consent and saying, please, you know, have access and filling out a survey rather than going and having to collect all that and email it and fax it and mail CDs and MRIs and whatnot. So thank you for your participation in the study that we're talking about today. Um, you're the best. <laughs> All righty. 
everyone. I'm head of customer support here at Citizen. Um, Sophie and I are going to go through and show you how to actually do an onboarding. So basically how to get your records set up on Citizen. Um, I'm going to, Sophie is going to share her screen and we're going to walk through the process. Indeed. So before we jump in, I'm going to pretend to be a patient. Mikkel is going to be the wonderful human that she is helping you get set up, whether that is on this webinar, whether that's in a one-on-one -on -one appointment, you can schedule with her anytime off of the CCF landing page. Um, and so we'll kind of, just so you know who each person is. <laughs> um, before we do though, wanna just very, very quickly show you some background slides on what to expect, what the process looks like so that um, you have that context as we kind of go in here. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly. And of course, this takes a second. Thumbs up, everyone can see screens. Yay, excellent. So very quickly, lots on this slide. Who is Citizen? We're founded by a person who understands the importance of health data and the fact that cancer patients need it at their fingertips. He learned it firsthand as a caregiver to his late sister who died of metastatic breast cancer. The citizen platform has three parts. The first um, that Fred's you know, referenced is we gather all of your records for you. There is no going into the basement of your hospital. There is no phone calls. There is no faxes, you know, let alone you have to track down a fax machine, let alone send a fax. We do all of that for you. I like to joke with TurboTax getting your medical records, we make it super, super easy. And that's the goal. We get all your medical records and also all your imaging. Um, I know there's a question in the chat around um, the, the viewing format, there's a full radiology viewer on the platform for you to view those DICOMs. I don't know if you've had the experience of getting an MRI on a CD. My computer doesn't have a CD-ROM anymore, so there's challenge one. Challenge two is, do you have the software to read whatever version of MRI machine you happen to be scanned on? So we've addressed a lot of those challenges by having a compatible radiology platform for you to view all your images, as well as anyone you choose to share your records with. So part one, we get all your records, but we don't stop there. So the second part and um, what you can expect from us is that we digitize those records so that they're accessible. If you're like most cholangiocarcinoma patients, you're gonna have thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of medical records. You're gonna have been seen at multiple institutions. And so what we're able to do with our technology is aggregate and then pull out all the relevant clinical information so that it's useful useful to you to coordinate your care, um, but also useful to researchers to understand the key clinical inputs and values of your care. So that's really, you know, fancy computers and lots of cool tech is what um, digitize your records. Lastly, and most importantly, is we put you in the driver's seat of choosing who gets access to your records. When you join Citizen, no one has access to your data by default. We are an opt-in only platform. So when you join, you have the choice of who gets access. If you wanna join Citizen and never share your records with anyone, that is totally your choice. The platform is free and is a resource for you in your care, however that looks. However, if you do choose to share, you control who, what level of detail, and for how long. That can be your physician, your family, caregivers, or as in the case we're talking about today, researchers um, like Dr. Maythel, and that's a power that we put in your hands to choose and control. So this is Citizen from beginning to end. Today, we're gonna really walk through what gather, gathering your records looks like and setting up your account and walking through step-by-step -step for anyone who hasn't done that yet. But before we did, just wanted to give you greater context around um, what the platform can do kind of beginning to end. And then Fred mentioned very quickly, so this is just a schematic of, you know, we get your records, we extract it, a human reviews it, and then you choose to share it with whoever you want. Um, I'm going to skip some stats just in the interest of time. Uh, Fred mentioned that we now also do clinical trial matching. Want to put this up on the screen really quickly. We launched this together with the Clangio Carcinoma Foundation back in September. But now as a citizen member, you can also request your free custom clinical trial report based on all of that rich clinical data in your profile. And so we're able to match you against over 150 trials 
uh, and then give you a list of the ones that you qualify for, as well as the ones that are near your location preferences, both where you live um, as well as across the country. So while we're talking about the research study uh, and your ability to contribute to research, really wanted to highlight that there's a variety of benefits to joining um, that are all accessible to you through our partnership with CCF. So let me go ahead now and see if there's any questions uh, before we jump into the onboarding flow. Um, I wanna make sure yes. that we take some time to, to answer those. Yeah, I'm talking quickly, so yeah, slow me down. Do <laughs> um, so you answered the question about the um, viewing of the images, um, which I love to get on and view my images. I don't know why, but I, I like it. It's nice to see the difference between, you know, each scan that's taken. Um, so I just started a clinical trial yesterday. Do trial investigators allow for uploading medical records from the trial? I would want to understand the nuances of your case. And I don't want to misspeak because this is a place where it depends. Um, it depends on the investigator. It depends on where the clinical trial is being held, if it's at the NCI, if it's an academic medical center. And so rather than answering broadly, um, I will say that we can get records from clinical trials if that is permissible by the organization or institution running the trial. Um, if those records are part of your EMR and your record set, we will absolutely get them. Uh, the reason it varies is because if it's an academic clinical trial versus a pharma run, there's different um, protection on the records because it can be proprietary or um, related to FDA filings. And so I realize that's probably an unsatisfactory question, but it depends. What I will say is if there are records that you want to get a hold of, please email us. Uh, we would be happy to look at the specifics of your case and work with you to try to get a hold of those. We've got a very um, persistent team who is very, very good at getting records uh, and also have kind of the, the legal backup to really allow us to advocate on behalf of patients and their legal right to their records. So please email us um, support at citizen, citizen with two eyes, um, and we'd be happy to help help you with that. Okay. And Lisa's giving you a shout out that citizen made it easy to collect over 10 years of records and it was super easy and they continue to update um, her file with new scans and blood work. Thank you to CCF and citizen. Um, and is citizen an app or a website? Uh, that's a great question. So we made the decision at the very beginning of the company to not make this an app. So Citizen is what is called a web native app. You can access the platform on any browser, be it on your phone, on your computer. You can do it on Safari, on Firefox, Chrome. And the reason we made the decision to go browser route versus app is that it's less things to keep up to date and it allows you to share your records with people who also don't have the app. Everyone has an internet browser and so we made that decision in the interest of sharing, making it easier. Um, practically too, um, Dr. Maythel and Jessica, you might you know nod, a lot of institutions have limitations on what software physicians can download, if they can open apps, download apps. And so we wanted to make sure that the solution that we built was accessible by your doctor. And so even within Epic, you can open an Internet Explorer browser and access citizen profiles. And so while we're constantly working to make it better, um, going the website route or web browser route um, let us gave us a lot of advantages. So that's why there, it's on an app you download. Okay. And do I need to send a request after every appointment? Mikkel, do you want to answer that? There's, there's a lot of ways you can kind of approach that. Yeah. Um, to get a new records, you do need to update the record request. You don't need to update the record request after every appointment. We certainly recommend it like every three months, every time you have a scan, if you were to go to an appointment that something important was discussed, I would certainly go in and update records and you have the option to update those records every appointment, but if you don't, we will obtain the same records in three months that we would that next day, as long as it is important information that you want on your account right away. 
Mikhail, can I just clarify something there? Because I just want the patients to know how easy this is. That what that means is you're going to go into your, you're going to, you know, click on your link, go into your profile. You're going to click to update. You're going to tell them what place you were seen and you're going to send, and that's it. That's what you're going to do. This yeah, is like going to take you about 10 seconds to do. Right. You've already made the request there. You basically click update records. You're going to see you've already made a request to Stanford University, click update records, and it's done. Very as, easy. A, as a patient, I might jump in. When I was receiving chemo, I'd get weekly blood results. And I, I didn't see any need to say, hey, update each week. I'd wait for a month or maybe even between CAT scans to say, hey, collect all my data that is new. And that's exactly what uh, Citizens does. It, it downloads from that uh, institution that runs all those lab tests and CAT scans, put it into the system. And asking for one blood test is putting the caregiver, the folks in the hospitals and uh, research institutions, it's kind of a waste of time, their time, do it all at one time, bunch of data. Okay, and once again, I just want to emphasize that all of this is free to the patient. And all always right. will be. No, it's a big and benefit. I, yeah, I think another important thing is that the 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 patients who want to who want to engage in research, um, that 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 information then is free to the researchers. And in many of these companies charge the researchers for that information. And that's, that's not part of our agreement with Citizen. And so they, all of the researchers who are engaged in cladiocarcinoma research are going to have you know, de-identified. They won't be able to identify you, but they'll have access to this aggregate information. This will really help them. You know, I mean, maybe you can talk about that just a little bit, Shashir, for just a minute, what that means to have that kind of access to this much data. That's uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty incredible resource. Um, trying to get, well, I was going to actually say two things. Let me first from the clinical perspective. I just want to add that as a physician who sees patients who comes for a second, third opinion, and trying to get data from five, six different places, and they got their CAT scan at X, you know, X hospital locally, and then they got biopsy at another hospital and that got read by a outsourced pathologist and then they got scanned and that got outsourced you know to India and got read in India and and my office is trying to gather all of that data and try to understand it it's very very challenging so having a, a sort of like as I mentioned in my initial remarks like having a ability to centralize it all into a very easily accessible thing I will tell you just from a, from a patient perspective, it's really, really helpful to have it, uh, all the information correct and complete for your physician because it really facilitates good care discussion and really kind of the right, the right next moves for you and the right next treatments for you. So that, that's one thing I would tell you just from a, from a um, personal selfish standpoint, it, it makes the whole interaction jet that much better and that much easier. From a research perspective, you know, patient data is uh, everything that we need in order to do research. And, um, you know, we, we do spend a lot of time going through patient charts the best we can. And oftentimes we're limited to our own institutions and our own patients that we treat at our own institution, or we're collaborating with other institutions, but we're only limited to the patients that were treated at those five institutions that we're collaborating with. So you get a little bit of a, a skewed, um, a skewed kind of portrayal of what's going on because they could be patients only at some of the big academic centers that we collaborate with or certain geographies or whatever, whatever the uh, kind of bias may be. But going through something like Citizen really gives us a cross section and a snapshot of what's going around in the country. Because uh, and, and actually world because Colangio Carcinoma Foundation has a global, um, you know, global following here. I don't, I don't guess following is probably not the right word, but that's the best word I can think of right now. But you know, there's global um, uh, global participation here and um, and getting this kind of- And Dr. Data. Mitha, I'm gonna pop this map up. This yeah, is a yeah. map of all of you and where you receive care. And so right. you can see, you know, quite distributed. It's all over the place. And while we may have collaborations with a lot of those circles, definitely don't have them with all of them. And it really just helps, um, you know, understand what's going on at a national level. 
So getting that kind of information, not only from so many patients in so many places, but the completeness of it uh, is very, very key. And I don't know if, uh, you know, just from a research perspective, I would tell you from a physician point, this is, these are questions that I ask uh, Sophia a lot. The, the methodology in which Citizen does the, the data acquisition is, you know, better than most of us can do in our own institutions in terms of how, how well it's vetted, rechecked, machine learning, and all of that really to get the data correct. Because um, there's always a, it's always very difficult to get the data all correct when you're looking for it over the years. And uh, I think the, the process that Citizen has in place is probably better, I would say, than most, not, I'm pretty sure it's better than most institutions have in their own research uh, kind of mechanisms. And having run one at Emory, I'll, I mean, I'm the first to admit, I'm sure theirs is better than ours. All right, um, I'm just gonna remind everyone, please send questions as we move along. And uh, Sophie's gonna give us a, a demonstration of how we can do the onboarding, but um, keep your questions coming. Yes. So I'm gonna give everyone two seconds here to get a driver's license. So the only piece of identification we need to request records on your behalf is a driver's license, a photo ID, a passport works. So if you don't have that handy, um, I'll give you like 30 seconds to go get your wallet and get that um, ID because we will need that during onboarding. Uh, that's the only thing you need though. So I promise there's no forms to fill out or anything crazy. Um, so we'll give everyone a second to, to make sure they have that. And then um, given that we're gonna walk through kind of how to sign up, I don't know if um, folks need to drop off. I know. Um, Jessica and Shashir, we really appreciate you joining us and our busy people. So I don't know if you want to stay on or want to say goodbye, but um, we'll walk through kind of step by step. Um, it'll take about 10 minutes. Um, and then if there's questions that come up as we go through, please, please stop us. The goal is to get as many folks on the call who haven't created their profile yet um, to complete it live with us. We're going to do a, an onboarding party. <laughs> I may, I'll stick on for a little bit. I have another call coming up, so I may jump off in the middle, but I, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all today. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you both for being here and thank you for doing the research you're doing. We appreciate it very much. Pleasure. Alrighty, so into the chat, I've dropped a link. If people want to go ahead and copy that and put it into their browser, this is um, CCF's landing page with Citizen. Um, lots of great stuff on there, some videos, explainers, FAQs. We'll let you kind of take a look at that at another time. But um, I'm going to go ahead and follow along here on my screen sharing. And then I'm going to go into patient mode. So Mikkel's going to take over and give you all the experiences if you were onboarding one on one with her here altogether. All right, Mikkel, I'm on the landing page. Perfect. What do I do next? So you'll see down near the bottom, there's a little blue button that says get started. You'll click there. Hey, it's you. Hey, there I am. <laughs> so this is gonna be a step-by-step -step process. You're gonna start with your first name, then your last name. And then next, you are going to put in your email. You're going to create your own password. It has to be eight characters long, at least one uppercase, at least one lowercase, and one number. And as you're typing the password, it's going to make a green check mark when it is correct, when it's passable. So you can see Sophia's added an uppercase, a lowercase, eight characters, and one number. Once all four boxes are green, you can create the account. I'm going to ask if you are doing collecting records for yourself or a loved one. You'll put in your diagnosis. to 
going to ask you when you were diagnosed. If you don't Thank remember, you, if you don't remember the exact year, go back enough so you make sure that we capture the right amount of records. Just make sure that we want to capture the, all of the records. It's asking if you've been advanced with metastatic disease going to ask where you were diagnosed. You can search by location, or if you'd rather search by provider, you can search by physician instead. Let's see, I think I was seen at Emory. Let's see, do we know which one? Looks like there's a couple. We're going to do UCSF is my actual real hospital. Here we go. Yep, on Parnassus Avenue. All right, and before we continue, anyone who's following on along live, any issues, any questions on how to enter your facility? I want to make sure we... I'm familiar, so I want to make sure we're going slow enough that everyone can kind of keep up, or if we need to slow down, please, I guess, raise your hand via the chat. I know I can't see you all. Yeah, no questions yet, but I'll holler if I see some. Perfect. Okay. I, this question, yes, I continue to receive care there. Um, so, Mikkel, what is this question asking me? So this is asking if you would like us to search for other in other healthcare institutions. This is something called a healthcare exchange. Some providers, but not all, will upload records to a health information exchange. So we're able to obtain records from different faci facilities at the same time as the original one. Um, so if you feel comfortable, say yes. If you don't feel comfortable, you can say no. And we can always collect the records individually e each facility. I do a Total timeout, side note, this is such a cool new feature that we rolled out in the fall. It makes it easy for us to scan everywhere you might have been seen. Records that come from these information exchanges usually come in within a day or two um, and is a part of our goal of making data accessible quickly, completely, and putting it into your hands as fast as possible. And so we're really excited about being able to kind of fold in this pretty novel record access that um, some very favorable patient-friendly legislation is coming down the pipe going live April 5th. So we've, we're, we're keeping our eyes out for all patient-friendly uh, and patient-first mechanisms, and this is one of them. So just wanted to call that out. All right. So next, it's going to ask if there are any sensitive record types that you do not want retrieved that includes, as you can see, mental health, sexual health, substance abuse, and AIDS. If you feel comfortable with us collecting those records, I recommend that you allow us to collect the entire record set. Some facilities leave out some weird information if you click those, but certainly if you don't feel comfortable, feel free to click those and we'll collect everything that we can. Thank you. Next, it is asking um, if you would like to donate your records to research. This is a choice. You can say yes, and they will be do donated. Everything is de-identified, so all of your personal information is taken off, your name, your date of birth, anything personal. Or you can choose Ask Me Later if you don't want to do it in this moment, but you may want to going down the road. And in the context of the Emory study we're talking about, this is one way in which you can, you know, opt into the general research initiative. However, you also have the option of consenting and opting into research studies on a study by study basis. So when you filled out the survey, you actually also were given a consent through the red cap survey you filled out with the Emory study that asked for your consent as well. So we ask it in multiple places. And if you don't wanna join this broad initiative, you, you have that choice at an individual basis as well. Alrighty. So this is where you're going to upload your photo ID. That's where I need to make sure I have it ready. Okay. So Sophia is gonna click upload photo. 
And this is where you get all, all get to see my computer, which is a little scary. And I just got a California driver's license after living here for a year and a half. Very proud of my five hour DMV ordeal to get this bad boy. So we're gonna go ahead and upload that. Important that it's clear that we can see your birthday because that's actually what the health record facility will validate. I look a little scary. This is my face after being at the DMV for five hours. So bear with me. Um, so, so Sophia, tell them how you just did that. Cause we couldn't see, you, did you, you took a picture? Oh, oh shoot. So if you are on a computer, you will be, I don't, will you be able to show it, Sophia, or it won't show it? Let's see. Oh boy. I'm going to reshare my entire desktop. This is imperfect. You're doing it from your phone. You actually activate your phone and take the photo right then and there. But if you are on a desktop or a computer, Sophia will show you what it looks like. There we go. So you can, if you have the file saved on your computer, that's one way to upload it. However, on your phone, you are also able to take a picture, which also works really well. So we're going to choose that for upload. All right. Are there any questions from people listening or watching along? Truthfully, the driver's license is probably the hardest part. So if we get through this, you're golden. <laughs> No questions. And just to confirm, it's only a picture of the front of your driver's license, correct? Yes. Um, for those um, who've been with us for a while, we used to also require a photo of the back. Uh, we've been able to change our systems to just require the front. So we're anywhere we can make it easier. We're always trying to, to cut down the steps and make it as easy as possible. Um, yep, it looks good. Again, apologies, I look so scary. <laughs> And it's thinking as it processes your ID. My internet's a bit overburdened with Zoom and onboarding. Anyone want to play the Jeopardy music? Fred, I feel like you could hit us with some really good Jeopardy music. Uh, I've got a, uh, I'm tone deaf. I can whistle it. So we That's have seen onboarding since Fred started. Fred, does it seem like an easier flow than when you first started? Do you remember when you onboarded? Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, I think one of the big problems I had initially was getting the photograph in. It took a couple times. Okay. Actually required your help, and it looks a lot easier now. Yeah, for me too. <laughs> because we went back and forth, I'm afraid I confused our system. Um. So I'm just going to ask a question why that's loading. Back when on the um where you were asked if you want to share your data for research, if you were to choose not at this time or ask me later, then what would what would patients look for, or how would they know to if they wanted to change their mind and contribute. Yeah, so you always have the ability to edit your preferences, whether you say you wanna participate or not, or ask me later, you can do that in the My Info section of your profile at any time. Now, in terms of what you can expect, uh, for exciting research opportunities like the Emory study that we're talking about today, you will get an email from us inviting you to participate and consent to that particular research study. So it really is a ask me later or it's not a no forever. Um, we wanna make sure you're still aware of the opportunities and you have that choice, but nothing, yeah. It, it's just, you. we think it's important for you to know of opportunities and to always have that choice. And so we'll, we'll make that available to you. Okay, and Steve has a good question. When one gets a driver's license renewal, does one need to resubmit citizen the photo of the new driver's license? No. So the way we... This is no different than if you were doing it. Really, we're acting as a third party on your behalf. 
And so if you were going to go to the basement of your hospital, they'd ask for your ID in the same way. Uh, we're really using it just as a verification of identity, not as a you know, up-to-date legal document. It's okay if your driver's license is expired, I guess. That isn't, we're not checking if you're safe to, to drive on the road. Gotcha. Um, and that's the only reason we ask for your driver's license and the only way we use it. Um, and it is stored completely separate from all your other information, securely and encrypted. And some people feel, um, can feel nervous about sharing that. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Are we good to? We're good. Excellent. So next it's asking if there are any prior names that your records may be found under. So if your name has changed any time while you were at the, the institution that you were seeing at. Um, it's gonna ask you to put in your phone number in case we need to reach you regarding any questions that we have regarding the requests. going to have you confirm that everything looks good or you can make changes if needed. Kel, I never gave you my address. Did you take this off of the driver's license automatically? Yes. As long as it was inputted clearly and we're able to grab that address, we will. And to the individual who asked if their driver's license has changed, their um, address has changed, you can click this edit button and modify any of this information. We're, we're using fancy OCR to pull it off your driver's license. So gotta, gotta have some bells and whistles too. All right, looks good. So here we are going to have you do put in your signature. It is very hard to do electronically. And I know we give you such a small space here, but if you click, if you're on your phone, you can actually use your finger to, to sign. If you're on your computer, you'll actually use your mouse pad to click down and sign. And you can clear the signature and try again, which happens quite often. Okay, we'll do it for real now. And it is important that it matches as closely as possible. This is how we verify you to your institution, your signature on the release and your driver's license. So I like to joke, you're not signing for a latte at the corner store. All right. Um, else, we do have a question that still can't figure out how to take a picture of my driver's license. Just maybe emphasize that one more time. Okay, so if you are on your phone, when you click in that little box, it's going to acti activate the camera on your phone. If you're actually on a desktop or a computer, your driver's license has to be saved on your, your desktop already. When you click the little box, it'll bring up your, your saved information and you can click on that to download it in. So if you were to do it off of your computer, you'd take a picture on your phone, save it to your computer and then upload it. Okay. You can email it to yourself, then save it to your computer and upload it. Okay. I realize we didn't give this heads up at the beginning, but the onboarding works best on your cell phone because of the camera access. Um, and we have found that over 60% of citizen users access their profile from their mobile phones. So everything that I'm showing you on this webinar is mobile compatible. And actually most of you access your records from your phone, share, re-request, so. Okay, one more question, Sophia. Uh, Scott has two different institutions were actually part of his original diagnosis. How can both be noted? I think you touched on that, but just to reemphasize that as well. Um, we're going to finish this process. It's going to let you start with one record request. And then once Sophia chooses authorize, we will show you how to make additional record requests. And um, this is asking if we're able to text you. Uh, it's gonna ask for your mobile phone number and if you would like us to text you or not. We would not text you very often. It would only be if we need some additional information and we are unable to reach you by email. All right. Should we, I have records from UCSF, but I've been seen at multiple places. Yep. 
you'll see Sophia just clicked get records, which was up in the top right corner. And that is where you will make any additional record requests at any time. If you're on your phone or your mobile device, it's in the menu area, which is in the top right or left, three small horizontal lines. You would just click the menu area with a drop down and choose get records. When you make additional record requests, you can make more than one record request. You don't have to go through the process one at a time. You can see that Sophia is adding additional requests all at the same time right now. And I'm gonna just throw this out there because I know this question gets asked all the time. Can you guys touch on the safety of this platform? My favorite question, and I really mean that, there is nothing more important than your security uh, and us safeguarding your most private health information. Core to our philosophy is that you are the sole decider of who gets access to it. Part of you having that choice is no one else having access. That means that our security is industry standard and then some in terms of HIPAA compliance, encryption, and how we store data on multiple servers. No technology is going to be 100% secure. Um, I can't in good faith make that promise. What I can say is we do everything humanly possible and technologically accessible to us to safeguard your data. Now, privacy has more to do with who gets access to your data and the way we control privacy and safeguard is by giving you the choice of who gets access to your data. And so you are the only one who can opt in, share, um, and do it that way. What I will say is that our team has been in the health tech space a very long time. Anil, our founder, was previously at Apple, led healthcare engineering there. And so he's learned from the very, very best in terms of how you build secure technology. Uh, and it is a at the forefront of everything we do. Um, our other co-founder, Devin, is a chief privacy or chief privacy officer and regulatory officer. She's a health data privacy expert. She spoke at Davos last year. This woman will fight till the end of the earth to protect your safety and security online when it comes to your health data. And um, she's an integral part of our team. So it we take it seriously and we, we take steps basically at every turn to make sure that it is at the forefront of everything we are building uh, and making accessible to you. Oh, Melinda, I think you might be on mute. Thank you. Um, and throughout that we went way too fast, but I want to let her know and everyone else out there know that this is recorded and you can go back and watch it at your own pace. And that also um, Mikhail is here for you and you can reach out to her and she's more than happy to walk you through step by step and help you get this done. Yeah, for the person that is having trouble with their driver's license, if you're still having trouble, feel free to reach out to me. Um, for some reason, I'm not seeing the chat box on Sophia's screen, but there's normally a chat box that you're able to reach out and chat at any time. You can also um, reach out to support at citizen.com as well. Okay, we're going to take a couple more questions, Sophia, or do you have a few more steps you want to go through? There's one, two last screens. All of your information is saved. So adding additional facilities, you don't have to upload your driver's license again. We save that all in your profile. So it's just a couple of clicks once you've done it. Okay, that's it. All right. Um, <laughs> how will the various doctors and institutions that I've gotten care from feel about the request to collect uh, all of this data for citizen? So I think there's a little misunderstanding there, but go ahead. We don't, so the way that hospitals are organized is that there's record information offices. So when we make a request, it isn't to your individual doctor, it is to the health information office of your hospital or facility. These are big teams who have a legal responsibility to you as a patient to give you access to your records. And so in term, to your question of how does your doctor feel about it, um, it's not work they are personally doing. Hospitals have big departments, so it's not like you're burdening you know, your very busy doctors. And it's your legal right. 
HIPAA right of access. And Devin, who I mentioned earlier, was actually the woman in government who wrote the guidance on this very important piece of patient first legislation. Um, it's your right. And these hospitals are staffed and resourced to allow you to gain access. Reality is a lot of them maybe don't make it that easy, but we, we help you do that. And one quick question. They want to know how to find the clinical trial finder. <laughs> I will drop this in the chat right now. I'm realizing that we blasted through slides really, really quickly. So give me two seconds and I will um, I'll put that in the, in the chat for you to request your uh, clinical trial report. You can always, if ever in doubt, email support at citizen.com. Um, that's the easiest way to get a hold of us and we can give, get you anything you need. Honestly, Mikkel is amazing. She usually gets back to you in like two hours, so. <laughs> Wonderful. So questions, uh, email support at citizen.com. Yeah. Or you can reach out to us at CCF and we'll make the connection for you as well. And I just want to emphasize too, just the benefit of using citizen as a patient, you get your medical records, you get to see your scans, you get to share your records. But to me as a patient, um, well, let me go back one more step. The ability to have your records matched to clinical trials for options as a patient is huge and something that we worked for really long and hard at CCF to provide to our patients, but also to be able to contribute to the science and have it in a validated, um, be able to contribute your validated medical records, I think just um, makes it so much better for the researchers and gives us an opportunity as patients to, um, to be a part of that research and to help us as patients and to also help the future of um, cholangiocarcinoma patients. So I think we've got all the questions and I just wanna say thank you um, to everything, everyone who's on here, let me make sure. Um, and this will be recorded and housed on our website and we'll make sure that um, if you have any questions, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks to you, Dr. K Dr. Kilson and Dr. Mathel, who's already off, um, to Fred for sharing his story and Sophia Mikkel, thank you so much for walking us through this. Everyone have a good day. Bye-bye.